Hey Siri, are there going to be any hardware announcements at WWDC today? So I'd like to take a moment to briefly address this question. No. <laughs> of course not. Hey, what is up guys? I'm KBHD here and this year, just like every year, we get Apple's WWDC. Now being a worldwide developer conference, this is not like an iPhone launch. This isn't like a hardware product launch or anything like that. This is mainly just Apple talking to developers about software. So, you know, watch OS, Mac OS, iOS, all that good stuff. But like every year we hope for like some nuggets, just a little bit of hardware to be thrown in there. Like I think last year at this, we got the sneak peek of the iMac Pro and we got HomePod. But we're out here for 2018 and the main keynote has come and gone and there is zero new hardware for this event. So this is all software. I already kind of gave my sort of first impressions and ranted live on Twitter, but for the sake of putting everything in one place or in case you missed it and don't want to watch the three hour keynote, this is the top five announcements of WWDC 2018. So putting them in order is really easy. Number five is the most boring one, Apple TV. No offense to Apple TV, but basically tvOS just got a couple little minor updates, nothing groundbreaking. They got uh, Dolby Atmos support for better surround sound audio. They also added some live sports and news channels. As a bonus, they tossed in a couple new video screen savers, which are already majestic to begin with, but they have some new ones that were shot from the International Space Station. So from Earth, looking down, in beautiful 4K HDR. They look magnificent, so that's really cool to see. I still have to bring up though that you can't watch YouTube in 4K on the Apple TV 4K. As beautiful as those new International Space Station videos are, that would have been an awesome thing to see. I know there's a sort of a stalemate there between Google and Apple, but frustrating. Anyway, number four is augmented reality. And this actually felt like a pretty big push from Apple this year. Uh, especially in iOS of just seeing AR all over the place. They announced a new file format called USDX, which basically it already has support from the Adobe Cloud and it's a way for sharing AR experiences. So you can embed AR experiences, you can share them, you can put them in apps, put them in websites. There's a bunch more AR kit improvements from last year. So they made some major strides. It's already at 2.0. And they announced uh, a new app, which is it's now gonna come default with iOS called the Measure app. And it's literally an augmented reality ruler, just lets you point your camera at things and measure them on the screen. It's what we've all been waiting for for a while. Actually, a lot of us weren't waiting for it. It was kind of a thing in the App Store already. RIP to all of those apps. But I thought it was pretty cool, just literally dragging along lines in real life, getting measurements of how long they are and how tall things are. I'm definitely gonna start measuring how tall people and buildings and all the random things are with this. Seems really cool. And then possibly the most technically impressive use of AR that they showed would be simultaneous sharing of an AR experience between two devices at the same time. That's like, the least sexy way of explaining that. But you already know what AR looks like. It's mixed reality. You can have two different devices looking at two different angles of the same thing at the same time and interacting with it. And the demo they did on stage was pretty incredible. It was just with Legos, but there was a whole lot going on. I also got to try a demo of this in an app. Basically, it was a slingshot game and the game was built around this mini world of blocks that people only looking at the iPads can see, but they're running around slingshotting things at each other and knocking down towers. It was just kind of funny to see people getting so enthusiastic running around with iPads around an empty wooden table. But honestly, this is a really, really big step forward for AR. Hopefully multiple devices can come to the same experience at once. A lot going on, so it's cool to see Apple push this forward. So the number three is the Apple Watch. I don't wear mine all the time, but it got some nifty improvements with watchOS 5. That's what I call it, nifty improvements. So there's some new activity sharing features for competing with or against your friends with workouts and things like that. There's new workout types for things like yoga, I think outdoor running and a couple other things like that were involved. And then also there's automatic workout detection in case you start a workout, but then forgot to start the workout on the watch and you wanna get credit for that. It'll kind of know when you start it. There's also a new walkie talkie mode, which they showed. If you wanna walkie talkie someone on your watch instead of just calling them, I don't know if I would use that, but some people were into it. But there's some other things like the podcast app coming to the watch, which is useful. Uh, and also the fact that you can raise to talk. So instead of saying, hey Siri, every time you raise it up, it'll just detect when you raise it up, know that you're talking to it, and you can just start your command. Hey, what's the weather? Hey, what's the sports scores? So that's pretty nifty. But overall, yeah, it's just a, a collection of useful new features. That's, that's watchOS 5. But then we get to the big stuff. Number two is the exciting new Mac OS Mojave. So that's the name of the new, and again, free upgrade for Mac OS, named after the Mojave Desert. Totally cool with me, I like the name. And the biggest, coolest feature, if you'd ask me by far, would be the addition of 
dark mode. Dark mode in Mojave is sweet. It's not just turning the menus dark, like you can already do that, but it's turning everything dark. It's super thorough. It's the finder, it's the background of apps, it's the menus, it's the dock, it's everything throughout. That's gonna look super sick on the Space Gray iMac Pro. I am super excited for this. Side note, they should also uh, probably make an iOS dark mode, which would be sweet, now that they have OLEDs especially as well on the iPhone 10, iOS dark mode. But anyway, I really like dark mode on Mac OS and I'm looking forward to using it. Then there was a couple other things like the Mac App Store redesign. I can't believe how long it took them to do that. It looked super old, but that's coming to the new version of Mac OS. And there's also now voice memos, stocks, news, and even the home app, all these things that are actually coming from iOS and it sort of signaled the beginning of a lot of crossover. Well, not crossover, it's mainly just iOS apps coming to that Mac experience. So people who develop iOS apps will only have to add a couple of lines of code to build and bring that entire experience to the Mac. And I think that'll bolster the Mac App Store a lot. That seems like their goal with that. But the beginning of that was those couple apps that are launching. And then one of the most liked new features is called Desktop Stacks. This is for people who have a messy desktop, which isn't me. I have a really clean, pristine desktop. It's rare for me to have more than like four things on my desktop. But if your desktop is a mess, you can have it automatically organized, basically arranged in stacks by file type or whatever you want. So if you're dealing with a lot of clutter, this can definitely help it look a lot better. And then number one, I wasn't even gonna make this number one, but because of all the crowd pleasing features they ended up adding to it, it is up at the top and that is iOS 12. The best thing at WWDC this year was all the new iOS 12 features. It's actually out already in beta, so people are still currently actively discovering new features with it that weren't even announced on stage. Maybe leave a thumbs up if you wanna see like a full video dedicated to the new iOS features, kinda like I've done with Android in the past. But there was a lot of good stuff. First of all, they say they're doubling down on performance. That was the number one thing they gave. So this is gonna be a big update that's gonna go all the way back to iPhone 5S. So many, many years of older devices are gonna get this, that's what Apple can do. So they concentrated on things like faster animations, faster loading and reloading and making things work and be responsive. And I'll never be against that, that's great to see. And then they announced grouped notifications are finally coming to iOS, finally, finally. I mean, we've just been waiting for this forever. I mean, obviously iOS notifications right now, big complaint. I mentioned this right before the keynote. If you have scrolled through iOS notifications, it's just a fire hose of redundant garbage. Like I don't need all of that. So what they showed on stage was pretty promising. iOS notifications from the same app get stacked together so you can address them all in one place. They're organized, they're clear cut, certain ones you can keep, you can swipe away groups of them at a time. It's finally appeared to catch up to Android in this way from the miles behind it's been for so long. In fact, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put iOS 12 on my new iPhone like right after this video, just for this feature. And then they also announced group FaceTime. Finally, this is another thing. People who use FaceTime really like it and use it a lot. Now you can do group FaceTime video calls. So it's basically this Rolodex style group chat. You can have up to 32 people in one at once and it's just the same video call. That's pretty insane. Basically, whoever's talking, their photo moves to the top and it gets bigger. I don't think I'll ever have 30 people in one chat, but it'll be cool to have three or four people who video chat a lot using this. That was another huge crowd favorite. And then while they're at it, even Siri got some improvements. It wasn't nearly enough improvements to catch up to Google Assistant. I think it's still way behind, but it did get a useful feature called shortcuts. So what this is gonna let you do is connect a certain in-app action or in-app shortcut to a custom command that you make in the Shortcuts app, or even a string of these commands. So you can say, hey Siri, heading home, just because you made that up. And in the app, you can tell it to set your thermostat to 70 degrees at home, open your navigation app to take the best route through traffic, text your roommate, your ETA home, and open Spotify and start playing music in the car. All of that just by saying one phrase. You can build that in Siri Shortcuts. So that's definitely useful, it's kind of the the one thing Bixby had going for it for Samsung. So, sorry Bixby, sorry Samsung. Oh, and actually speaking of Samsung, uh, another thing, Animoji got an upgrade. This is another thing I played with. There is a new tongue detection and a couple new animals like a T-Rex and a ghost emoji. So if you're waiting for new ones, now you have them. But what's really making headlines already is Memoji. Memoji, 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 Memoji. Memo Memoji. So it'll let you make a custom Animoji that looks 
exactly like you. It's not gonna look at your picture and make one for you like Samsung did, it's actually just letting you build your own. So I tossed one together and played around with it and it's exactly what you'd expect. It's like a cartoon version of yourself that you can spend a lot of time getting the details exactly right on if you really want to. Uh, and then they talked about tongue detection being a big deal and that is true, you can now stick out your tongue and it, it gets as crazy as you want there. But I actually found the eye tracking to be super realistic. That's what really sold it for me. You didn't really have eyes on previous Animojis. It was just kind of a beady black dot. Pretty impressive is the actual turning of the eye inside the head without your head moving, not gonna lie. So again, sorry Samsung and sorry AR emoji. But yeah, those are the keystone, like huge things for iOS. You also now get Animoji in FaceTime. You also get a bunch of improvements to search and suggested search and things like that in the Photos app. And there's also now the ability to sort of track your overall use of your phone and maybe decide if you wanna cut down on some things or drop the addiction of certain apps by restricting the amount of time you spend in it. That's useful. So yeah, just generally a lot of improvements under the hood, a couple new really big useful features. That's what's new in iOS 12. It's not a whole lot of design stuff. It's gonna look the same, but the features are new. But that is it. That is everything you need to know about what went down at WWDC 2018 out here in California. Feel free to share this video with anyone who you think may be interested. Maybe you know someone who is dying to get FaceTime video chat going. And let me know what your favorite feature is. Maybe you agree with my list. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have a different favorite. Either way, thanks for watching. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.